What's up guys, who's here and today I'm back with another video. So, as yesterday was the 25th of December, that means it was Christmas. So today, that means everybody's going to be starting to plan out their New Year's resolutions and what they're going to be doing for the rest of the next month because the New Year's resolutions usually only last about a month. But, one of the main New Year's resolutions that I think everybody makes year on year is that I'm going to lose weight. For those of you who are wanting to lose weight, who are wanting to lose all that rubbish that you've just eaten in the past few weeks during the course of Christmas, I am now going to tell you a way in which you can lose all of that fat and get yourselves into better shape. So this video will be a two part video of which this one will consist of how to calculate your macros and what macros are and then a dietary advice and you know tips and stuff that I've been through to then try and help you lot as well. Whereas the next video will be the supplements and you know my favourite supplements that I use when I'm cutting and how to train when you're cutting as well. So let's get straight on into the video in order to calculate how many carbs, proteins and fats you actually need. I've got my laptop here which is full of all the information that you possibly need that I've kind of gathered and that I've learned and taught myself over the years. So what you need to do is that you need to take your body weight and multiply it by 11 to 14. So whatever your body weight is in pounds, multiply that by 11 to 14, so 12, 13 or 14. So you multiply it by 11 if you have a sedentary, sedent, sedentary, sedent, if you have a sit down job and you don't really do much exercise outside of it, maybe train a couple times a week, not that much. For example, if you are a student and you sit down at your desk all day working and you maybe go to the gym around about twice a week or so, you would multiply it by 12 if you're a little bit more active, you know, you do a little bit more sport, you you go to the gym maybe three times a week, you know, you push yourself a little bit more and then you'd multiply it by 13 if you have a bit more of an active job and you push yourself completely when you're training in the gym, you know, you probably go about three to four times a week, you'll make sure that you get everything sorted, you're constantly active and you know, you try and make an active effort to make sure that you're up and about and you're actually doing stuff as well. Then you'd multiply it by 14 if you're literally in the gym every day, you have a really active job and you know you're living that completely active lifestyle now you've got to be truthful and do this as well so let's say you're actually at level 14 but you want to lose fat ridiculously quick so you're going to do it at the rate of level 11. so realistically what you're going to do is like yeah you'll lose fat quicker but you'll also lose a whole lot of muscle with it because you're not eating the right amount of stuff that you need to be eating in order to maintain the muscle as well. So what I would recommend is losing around about half a kilo a week. Okay, so once you've established how many calories you actually need, then you can actually figure out how much protein you need. The general rule is a pound protein per pound of body weight they actually are. So you need to get your weight in pounds and then basically have whatever that weight is, is the amount of protein that you need to maintain and to keep your muscle when you're cutting. So when you're trying to work out fat, a lot of people freak out and they look at the fat and they're like, oh my God, that's too high. You gotta remember that fat is very dense. So it's very high calorie, but the amount of grams that you're eating of it will be very minimal. What you gotta aim for roughly is around about 0.3 to 0.6 grams of fat, depending on uh, what, what you're like and what your eating habits are. So let's say that you eat really fatty already and you have a lot of uh, high calorie foods that you know have a lot of fat in them, then maybe start off at around about 0.6 six and then as your cut goes on you can recalculate it maybe cut it down and take it down as it goes now once you've figured out your fats your proteins and your actual calories you need to figure out the carbs to make it that last step in order to first off calculate your carbs what you need to be doing is taking your protein intake and multiplying it by four because there are four calories in a gram of protein and you need to figure out how much protein you're taking in on a daily basis then what you have to do is multiply your fat intake by nine to then figure out what your fat calories are now the two figures that you've just been given so your protein figure and your fat figure Got to add them two together and subtract that from your main calorie number that you figured out at the start. And that figure that you've just been given is the amount of carbohydrates that your body will need when you're cutting. Then what you have to do is that with that figure, you have to then divide that by four because there are four calories per each gram of carbohydrate. So then that answer, once you've divided it by four, is the total amount of carbohydrates you need per day in order to succeed with your cut. For example, let's take somebody who's more of an athlete that weighs in at around about 190 pounds. You're going to need to do 190 pounds, multiply that by 14, and that therefore gives you 2,660. Then you need to 
figure out the protein, so 190 multiplied by one, which is obviously 190. So you have 190 grams of protein. Then you do 190 times that by 0.4 to get how much fat you need, which would be 76 grams. And then from there, what you need to do is that you need to then add those two figures together, which would then equal 1,444 in total. And once you have that in place, you need to take your initial calorie figure, which was 2,660, and then subtract the figure that you've just been given, which was 1,440, and that will give you how many carbohydrates your body needs on a daily basis, which is therefore 303 grams of carbohydrates. Scratch that, it was 304, my maths is incorrect. So that breaks down your daily macros to cut to be 190 grams of protein, 76 grams of fat, and 304 grams of carbs, all within your total of 2,660 calories. At first, when you're calculating these macros, everybody's body is different, so everybody's figures will be completely different as well. Some people will lose more at different times, some people will have a massive spike at the start, and then they'll start to gradually even out as well. But if you ever hit a plateau with your weight loss journey, what you need to be doing at that point is then readjusting what your calories need to be and readjusting what your macronutrients need to be as well. So, you know, maybe taking out a few carbs here and there, hiring the fats, or lowering the fats. But from my experience, what I would do is that I wouldn't actually lower your protein as much, maybe around about 10 grams here or there, but I wouldn't do it that that much because your body will need the amount of proteins that it has in order to recover from the training that you're actually doing itself. So now that I've got that out of the way, I need to be telling you some of the tips and tricks that I have in order to succeed with your cut, in order to stay on track. And so what you could be doing when you're cooking is that instead of cooking with oil, you could be cooking with non-stick spray instead. Then from there, what I would do is that I would choose all your lean meat sources. A lot of supermarkets nowadays, they do 96.4 or 95.5 ground beef. Now that basically means 95% beef, 5% fat, or 96% beef, and then 4% fat. That took me a hell of a long time to figure out as I was trying to do this. You can have a lot of alternative sources, then have a chicken without the skin on it instead. Now for me, when I'm cutting, I tend to stick to chicken and I tend to stick to mince as well. A general rule is, you know, the more colors you have on a plate, the better. And vegetables, they are a great way to bulk out a meal completely and they're so low in calories, they're so dense and they're so dense in basically everything that you can have so much of them and it'll fill you up and it'll fill you up for longer and it'll fill your body for so, so much longer as well. Okay, so my next tip is to basically make sure that you're constantly hydrated. So what you're gonna need to do is Get rid of those sugary drinks. At the end of the day, sugar is carbs. You know, you're gonna be wanting to eat your macros rather than actually drinking them instead because you can get more from it and then you'll probably be fuller from it as well at the end of the day. Going back to water, what you can get are sugar-free fruit juice cordials as well, which is what I personally had a hell of a lot because that would basically allow the water to go down a whole load easier and it would make me have a lot more water as well. Then it's the subtle things as well, so that you've gotta be smart with. You gotta make sure that you're using your calories effectively and you gotta make sure that you're using your macros effectively as well. It's things like changing from bacon to turkey bacon as well because turkey bacon has less fat in or if you don't want to do that switch then cutting off the fat of the bacon already. You know, those little things will then therefore help you to succeed in this cut as well. Now what I would also say as well is don't be too strict on yourself because there are so many times I speak to people and they're like, yeah, but I'm on a diet, I can't have this, I can't have that. No, you know, allow yourself a snack here and there. Now I'm not saying go overboard and eat a whole cake, no. But what I'm saying is if you can fit that food into your macros, then by all means, go for it. If you know you're gonna go out with your mates later that evening and you're gonna go for a Nando's, look up online what the macros of that meal would be and then try to figure it out and then try base your daily intake off of that meal as well so you can still go out and you can still enjoy yourself. Now, an app that I would use to measure everything and to make sure that you're staying on track is my fitness pal. My fitness pal basically allows you to input all your calories and all your data and it allows you to scan the barcodes of foods as well. So it allows you to make sure that you're not going over your macros and it allows you to make sure that you're sticking to what you have set. Now, to be completely honest, that for me worked. So I would make sure that I tracked everything and I made sure that I wouldn't be too harsh on myself. I had my fruit cordials, I had my snacks, I had my junk days here and there as well. I would usually say that I had a cheat day around about one meal every week. So it would usually be on a Thursday after a night out, but it's not a full day of eating. It's just a meal because a full day of eating can set you back so many days. However, just one meal, it might save you about maybe a day. It's not really gonna make that much of a difference to you realistically. Now overall, that basically concludes how to cut, 
how to calculate it and my tips in you know in how to cut as well so i hope you enjoyed this video now what i want you all to do if you're still here at the end of this video because this has been a long ass video then drop it a like button subscribe and share it across to your mates as well if you know people wanting to get in shape for this summer or whenever the hell they want to be getting in shape for let them know spread the word on my channel and it is much appreciated so on that note i will see you all later have a good one